Good afternoon from one of the, well, the windiest place in North America. I am standing atop, head smashed in buffalo jump in the Porcupine Hills of southwestern Alberta. And I wanted to give you a quick talk up here because when I go outside, it is so windy there's no point in me talking. But this is one of the most important archaeological sites on all of planet Earth. We are in the land of the Blackfoot Confederacy, Treaty 7 territory. This is their home, the land specifically of the Pekinese um, down the road, and the Kainai or Blood are further to the south and east, <coughs> the Pekini right down into Montana and Siksika further north. <coughs> One of the most incredible sites for at least 6,000 years. The Blackfoot hunted bison off these cliffs, uh, and this did no damage to the overall bison stocks. The way one talks about the destruction of bison, we sort of set the year of 1881 as the extermination of the Great Plains bison in North America. Uh, that is big and heavy. I just want to come and turn you around, everyone, because I'd like to show you the views outside in the distance. These are, of course, the Great Plains. Well, really the foothills here, but the Great Plains of North America. You carry on all the way across Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba to Ontario, straight out to the east, or you could follow rolling hills and flat plains all the way down to Texas, down in the southern United States. It is an incredible environment, but where we are up here is the landscape of the buffalo jump. Now the idea, of course, it would have been quite gruesome, but a buffalo jump is a rounded hill where the animals wouldn't have seen the cliff, but then suddenly there was a 10 meter cliff. And for several thousand years, the Blackfoot specifically, although there's evidence of people hunting and living here much longer ago, 10, 11,000 years, but they would have run the bison off these and harvested them. Now, let's just turn around. I'm on the top floor of this fabulous UNESCO World Heritage Site. It is a spectacular museum and it's so well run and it's so informative, and it's positive as well. It's not just you know, talking about the destruction, although it's pretty important. Here's sort of an artist's view of the jumps over here. Sorry, a bit of shadow. But I'd like to make my way outside. And it's a, a 200 meter trail. Um, the museum itself is built right into the cliff's edge. So that's part of the reason it's architecturally a wonderful uh, museum as well. Now you might see some marmots around. In fact, here's a whole collection of animals could see down through here and also you can see their names in the Blackfoot language which is pretty neat to see. But this is the clifftop trail and once I get up around the edge it'll be too windy for me to bother trying to give you any commentary. So you can soak in as much of this as you'd like. See some of the, the grasslands coming up, some of the flowers, the distance behind me. We don't see them of course are the Rocky Mountains and to the south and slightly west is Waterton Lakes International Peace Park with Glacier Park in the United States. But here are those big river valleys or coulee formations. That is the valley of the Old Man River in the distance there. And there is such a beauty to these grasslands. Historically, they weren't particularly treated except for the river valleys. Oh, there we go. There's a nice, healthy prairie dog out there. That looks more like a gopher to me rather than a marmot. This is the cliff top walk and honestly as soon as I come around this bend here I will just let you soak in the views but imagine for 30 kilometers up to the west or up to the left there would have been cairns markers the uh, the Blackfoot would have dressed like wolves and coyotes and they would have driven the bison down to this point and then over the cliffs and they would use every bit of the animal and because the animals were so productive food wise it actually meant that as a semi-nomadic population, they had really wonderful food security, which of course allowed time to be dedicated to, to all sorts of other cultural and happy activities. So here comes the wind, everyone. So please bear with me and we will walk up along the cliffs of head smashed in Buffalo Jump. grasslands. But have a look.
farms in the distance. Big part of the economy now for the nations in this area. Often a herd of bison out here. I haven't seen them today. I've seen a lot of white-tailed deer driving down. Now the reason I'm down here is I'm heading down to Waterton Lakes National Park and then on into Montana. And I'm staying in Browning tonight, which is the Blackfeet Nation of the Pekinee on the American side of the border. And then going into Glacier National Park tomorrow. But honestly, if you travel down into southwest Alberta and Glacier Park in Montana. Don't forget some of these landscapes out here and this history down to this area. Incredible place. Very, very hot in the summer. Cold but dry in the winter. And almost always windy. Now I happen to like the wind. I don't like it guiding, but I like the wind. Some people find it a little hard to take. Just bring you up to a few of these signs here, just as a final view. By tomorrow, I think there'll be a blue sky here, but I won't be here tomorrow. But this is just such a meaningful place to visit. Landmarks in the south. Chief Mountain is the border with the United States. 49th parallel, of course. But to the Blackfoot people, this is all their home. to see these cliffs out here. joining me here. Please do come here. Please do engage a, a local Blackfoot guide. They don't have any guides on at the moment, just in the reopening after the pandemic. But it is fabulous country. And give your time to walk out here any time of the year. It's just so incredible. And the light is really made for artists. Calgary is about an hour and a half north of here, to put it in some perspective. And the U.S. border is about an hour and a half south.